There are literal mutants who live more than a hundred years because they possess this gene and by copying them, you and I can also live a very long time. Give me the honor of being your life-changing coach and visit medicallyenhanced.weebly.com. Consultations, fitness, gene analysis, blood work review, nootropics, longevity, and much more. Today we're going to discuss a gene by the name of FOXO3 and we're going to discuss what it is, its associations with living a very long life, its functions in the body, and I'm going to give you six ways by which you can activate your own FOXO3 gene in order to hopefully live a very long life for yourself. So the genes you have in your body usually code for proteins and the FOXO3 gene codes for a protein known as forkhead box O3. And this protein belongs to a family of transcription factors known as the forkhead family. Now I'm going to explain all of this, so bear with me. But in molecular biology, transcription factors are proteins which control the rate at which DNA can be transcribed into messenger RNA. And messenger RNA is then read by a cellular structure known as the ribosome in order to synthesize a protein. So before humans used to send letters in a post office, let alone have cell phones, we used to use pigeons carrying letters from one place to another. You can think of the messenger RNA as a pigeon holding a letter from the DNA to the ribosome in the process of protein synthesis. And protein synthesis is extremely important in the body because proteins can do various things, including help structures, act as enzymes that uh, catalyze certain reactions, or even act as hormones, that's things like luteinizing hormone, follicle stimulating hormone, growth hormone, etc. So by binding to a specific DNA sequence, forkhead box O3 can dictate the rate at which DNA can be transcribed into messenger RNA, thus regulating really protein synthesis in the body of many different proteins. And we're going to discuss its functions after we discuss the associations with very long life. Now, there is an exorbitant amount of single nucleotide polymorphisms, which are basically you can think of as mutations in this gene that have been associated with living a very long life. I personally found 21 of them, but I'm not going to go through all of them in this video, even though I will put them up on the screen. But I will discuss this meta-analysis with you, which included over 10,000 people. And the aim of this meta-analysis was to find the FOXO3 gene mutations that were the most strongly associated with longevity. And they had 5,241 cases of uh, very long life. So that's people who lived 95, 100, 110 years, etc. As well as 5,724 controls. Now, what this meta-analysis concluded was that there's five FOXO3 gene mutations that were mostly associated with longevity, two of which are mostly in males, and the other three are in both sexes. So the FOXO3 gene mutations that were mostly associated with longevity in males are RS2802292, RS2764264, and the FOXO3 gene mutations that were associated with longevity in both sexes are RS1321795, RS1935949, and RS2822288. I also think it's important for you to know that FOXO3 doesn't just play a role in how long you live, but it also gives you better health overall. So, for example, in this study, the FOXO3 gene carriers were compared to younger controls, and despite being older, they had better self rated health. They were leaner with a lower waist to hip ratio. They had lower triglycerides, which are a marker for uh, cardiovascular health as well, as well as metabolic health. They had lower glucose and insulin levels, which are uh, markers of insulin resistance and metabolic health. In addition, they had a lower prevalence of cardiovascular disease, stroke, and cancers. All of that despite being older than the control group. So let's discuss the functions of forkhead box O3, starting with apoptosis, which is also known as programmed cell death. So basically, forkhead box O3 can single to your cells to self-destruct, and that may sound like a bad thing. Why would I want my cells to self-destruct? Well, signaling to the cells to self-destruct in a timely manner allows for survival of your entire organism. You and I are having some level of apoptosis in our cells right now, because we have a lot of faulty cells, we have a lot of cells with DNA damage that's beyond repair, we have a lot of cells that can turn cancerous. Another example is in the womb, your fingers are more connected together than they are now. 
And apoptosis is what helps you form act an actual hand by separating the fingers and killing the tissue that's in between them. Another nice and curious example of the importance of apoptosis in maintaining good health is this study in which FOXO3-dependent apoptosis actually reduced liver inflammation that was induced by alcohol via the recruitment and promoting the differentiation of anti-inflammatory macrophages that's a type of white blood cells. So it limited the inflammation that was induced by alcohol in these animals. And that was purely via the apoptotic effects it has. So programmed cell death actually reduced inflammation here and limited the damage that was done by alcohol in these animals. The second function is cell cycle control. So basically your cells are usually in three states, either resting in the interphase where DNA replication is going on or in cell division where the cells are in the, in the actual process of division. And why is it important to control the cell cycle? Well, let's imagine I hurt my pinky finger, okay? And there's a laceration here, and then I stitched it up. I would want an adequate amount of cell division in order to heal up uh, the injury, but I don't want an excessive amount to where I grow a tumor, and I don't want uh, an insufficient amount to where I don't heal at all. So FOXO3, is gonna encode for the protein forkhead box O3, which is gonna ensure that I have an adequate cell cycle. And that doesn't just stop with injuries. You could think of other examples like uh, your reproductive system. So this process is very tightly regulated and FOXO3 plays a role in that regulation. The third function is it gives the body resistance to oxidative stress. Now, oxidative stress is caused by reactive oxygen species. And these are either byproducts of cellular metabolism or they are used by your immune system to kill cancer cells and bacteria, etc. Now, you don't want zero reactive oxygen species in your body because otherwise you're going to grow tumors, you're going to have a lot of infections, etc. But you also don't want it to be excessive. And FOXO3 makes sure of that by upregulating the production and expression of enzymes that are active antioxidants such as superoxide dismutase or catalase, etc. This will ensure you don't have a disbalance between oxidants and antioxidants, and it's going to help your body function at a higher level, as well as help you uh, prevent DNA damage, uh, neuronal damage, as in brain damage, uh, muscular damage, joint damage, etc. It is much easier for your body to produce oxidant molecules than antioxidant molecules, and FOXO3 helps with that balance because you don't want to have a disbalance between oxidants and antioxidants because then you're damaging a lot of DNA. You're even damaging your brain if the oxidant profile is high. You're damaging your joints, you're damaging your skin, you're aging rapidly, etc. And you can be predisposing yourself to a lot of cancers, although that case is a little different when it comes to smokers and people exposed to a lot of radiation, but that's a topic for another video. Now, the fourth function is that FOXO3 is a metabolic regulator. I'm going to show a booklet on the screen and link it down in the comments of around 115 pages where they talk about the metabolic functions of FOXO3. And I would recommend it if you're going to nerd out on this stuff. Basically, FOXO3 upregulates the gene expression of enzymes that are involved in glucose and lipid metabolism. That's the metabolism of sugar and fat. It's involved in gluconeogenesis enzyme regulation. So gluconeogenesis is the creation of new glucose out of molecules that are not glucose, such as protein mostly and fat. And that is used in order to maintain a homeostatic adequate level of blood glucose so you don't get side effects of hypoglycemia, which is pretty terrible. And it also can be involved in the regulation of glycogenolysis. Now, glycogenolysis is the breakdown of a polysaccharide molecule that you mostly store in your muscles called glycogen. And you basically store this for pretty much, quote unquote, a rainy day when you don't have enough uh, glucose in your bloodstream and you need to use glucose for energy. Obviously, it's also involved in uh, lipid metabolism, like I mentioned. The fifth function is that forkhead box O3 is involved in autophagy. And autophagy is basically, to put it simply, our body's way to recycle dysfunctional or useless components of a cell in order to turn them into something useful and prolong survival. So for example, improper autophagy has been linked to cancer and neurodegeneration. That's the degeneration of neurons, which are the cells of your nervous system, including your peripheral nerves, your spinal cord, and your brain. So maintaining an adequate level of autophagy is gonna ensure not only prolonged survival, 
but also improved health overall and performance. The sixth function is DNA repair, where FOXO3 can actually upregulate the expression of enzymes that can repair your DNA. So basically, when our DNA is damaged by whether it be inflammation, reactive oxygen species, reactive nitrogen species, bacteria, parasites, viruses, etc., FOXO3 can play a role in repairing that DNA and making sure we don't have dysfunctional cells nor mutant cells that can then turn into cancers. A nice little example of that would be this paper which showed that FOXO3 can potentially even have a neuroprotective effect as in this study it upregulated both the enzymes that uh, are antioxidants, active antioxidants such as catalase and superoxide dismutase as well as enzymes that are involved in DNA repair when damage is being done which are part of the DNA damage response basically. And it's important to know that DNA repair is a part of autophagy in and of itself by definition. Now the seventh and last function I'm gonna discuss today is that FOXO3 can actually modulate the immune system to target not only infections but also cancers. So basically these uh, people with g specific gene mutations at FOXO3 that make them live to 100 and beyond, they have a very active FOXO3 gene. So if you yourself take measures to activate your FOXO3 gene, you can have a better immune system against both infections and cancers potentially. Which leads us to the next question, which is how can you yourself activate your FOXO3 gene more than usual? The first method is calorie restriction. So in this study, the authors divided the mice into four groups. The first group was a wild type group that was fed normally and wild type means basically the genes were not messed with in these mice and the second group was wild type with a dietary restriction of 30 percent the third group was not wild type one of their foxo3 genes was knocked out and don't forget you have two copies of every gene inside your dna the fourth group was a double knockout at the foxo3 gene and found life extension only amongst group two where FOXO3 was present as two copies, which proves that the FOXO3 gene plays a crucial role in the life extension properties of calorie restriction. And it is quite well known that calorie restriction can actually extend your life. Now, while the first method can work, it is very inconvenient to keep restricting your calories throughout your whole life just to upregulate your FOXO3 gene expression. So I looked into intermittent fasting and it actually did have uh, solid evidence, in my opinion, that it can also extend life via FOXO3 activation. So the authors of this study took 15 New Zealand white rabbits and divided them into three groups, five of them in each group. The first group was a control group where there was no dietary restriction. The second group was an intermittent fasting group where they, they fasted for 16 hours. And the third group was a prolonged fasting group where they fasted for 40 hours. Now, interestingly, the intermittent fasting group actually had the highest gene expression of FOXO3 in their livers, which the most shocking part was it was 2.5 times higher than the prolonged fasting group. And intermittent fasting is not very hard, especially if you get used to it. And I'm gonna make a proper video about intermittent fasting later on. The third way is exercise. And exercise actually can reduce the phosphorylation of the FOXO3A protein. And basically when this protein is phosphorylated, meaning a phosphate group is attached to it, it can become inactive. So downregulating the phosphorylation of FOXO3A, which is basically forkhead box O3 protein, can actually make it more active and this this effect was more specific to resistance exercise than uh, for example uh, endurance exercise so resistance exercise is things like deadlifting and bench pressing and doing pull-ups etc and now we're gonna move on to supplements and drugs you can use to activate foxo3 and the first one surprisingly is curcumin now curcumin is one of the active molecules found in turmeric and it can reduce the phosphorylation of FOXO3A just like exercise can. Remember that means it can make it uh, more active because the phosphorylation of FOXO3A can make it inactive. Now curcumin is a very innocuous supplement. It's anti-inflammatory, it's an antioxidant uh, through several mechanisms, one of which is uh, activating FOXO3 and you can add it to your regimen and really take it and notice pretty much nothing. The side effect profile is very, very low. And yeah, that's the first supplement you can use to activate your own FOXO3 gene and potentially get a longevity benefit. Now, the fifth way you can activate your own FOXO3 gene is metformin. 
Now, metformin in this study where PMA was used on various white blood cells in order to induce oxidative stress in them and damage, metformin was actually able to attenuate that damage and oxidative stress via activating FOXO3 downstream to the AMP kinase pathway. So what does that mean in English? Basically, there's a pathway called the AMP kinase pathway, and you need this pathway for sort of repair instead of growing. So AMP kinase puts you in a mode of repair, relax, and not grow. That's why, for example, rapamycin works very well. It's a very potent inhibitor of mTOR, which is going to put your body in the mode of AMP kinase. And basically, the AMP kinase pathway is upstream to the FOXO3 pathway in specific situations and basically amp kinase can activate foxo3 downstream and the last method i'm going to discuss today to activate foxo3 gene is aspirin so potentially taking a baby aspirin daily could activate your own foxo3 gene and we can see that in this study where both aspirin and metformin were tested against the lipopolysaccharide induced inflammation in a cell culture of human aortic endothelial cells. Now, lipopolysaccharide is a bacterial endotoxin, and human aortic endothelial cells are basically the cells lining the inside of, the, of your aorta, which is the biggest uh, artery in your body, biggest blood vessel in your body in general. And they made a cell culture of uh, aortic endothelial cells, and they used lipopolysaccharide to induce inflammation. They tested both uh, metformin and aspirin. So to speak about the results of aspirin specifically, aspirin did attenuate the inflammation that was induced by lipopolysaccharide in the human aortic endothelial cells. However, it did not do that via FOXO3. It did that via the uh, inhibition downstream of uh, nuclear factor kappa B. But FOXO3 gene expression was upregulated by aspirin, and it is thought to be downstream due to the AMP kinase pathway. Now, this study is not perfect. It is the only study I could find that directly proves that aspirin can activate FOXO3. But as you can see, the materials and methods are very shallow. You don't see any details. You don't see any charts. You don't see any paragraphs even. It's just a very small paragraph about what they did. But I mean, it's the best we could find right now. And I'm not too mad about it because we know for a fact that aspirin does activate AMP kinase and AMP kinase can activate the FOXO3 gene. So it is not perfect, but it is worth noting. And in my opinion, almost enough to know that aspirin can activate FOXO3. So this video was long winded. Yes, but in my opinion, it is very exciting. Uh, this is why I started the channel to know about things that can both enhance our performance and make us live longer. Basically, if you want to lift your grandkids up when you're 90, if you want to not be debilitated by chronic pain and chronic disease when you're older, you really want to look into things like this. You really want to take this seriously now. Uh, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. Don't forget that. So, yeah. Thank you for watching. Like, subscribe. Check out my website. Goodbye.